Good morning, New 1%. It's Satoshi Boomin coming at you with another video. And guys, I'm going to need you to punch that subscribe button. Hit that like button and hit that notification bell. It really helps the channel. It pushes the channel up in the rankings so that more and more eyes can be seen on these videos. I really appreciate you and thank you. Up on the screen, we have our wonderful Patreon subscribers, AJ, Brett Garlickhouse, Mac Harris, Sergio, Lassie Nielsen, AmericanHomeRemedies.com, The Fern Line, Jeffrey, Ethan, Marilyn Crypto, Boost Wayne, and Brady Adams. Thank you for your wonderful Patreon support. I've got my hot tea and honey locked and loaded, ready to go. Let's get this show started, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Um, looking at the one-year chart, when in doubt, always move it out. We are up 9.5% on the day, but I still wanted to look at a macro view of the charts here just so that we can calm some titties i know that you know we have been up the past couple of days but you know people are still butthurt that you know we're not at a dollar yet so sorry that your butt hurt but uh you know that's just the way the markets go uh we are up 9.5 percent on the day but it is still good to look outward um <clears throat> especially after long periods of uh, moving sideways and slightly down. So hopefully we can see uh, V chain move upwards. Um, and I think it will just due to the markets as a whole. So that's the price. Moving on. <clears throat> All right, guys. So Ron Dalton here posts. Go ahead and give him a follow. Not the most active Vito burning day. But a few accounts had some good performances today. Walmart of China and Shanghai Gas had a private party earlier today. And it looks like we are burning about 2 million VTHO uh, as of right now. So a pretty slow day. Um, you know, it's a slow day in the crypto space as well. Not too much movement in the markets. And yeah, it looks like things are taking a cooling off. But that's okay. You know, we're still in this for the long run. We're still in this for the uh, the worldwide adoption, which is occurring each and every day. So, <clears throat> all right, Eisenreich. Obviously, he's on this video. He's on every video. Go ahead and give him a follow. V chain and COVID nineteen cold chain logistics. So we've done quite a few uh, showcases on cold chain. Um, if you don't know what V chain cold chain is, basically, let's take a look here. <clears throat> uh, v chain tracks things on the blockchain, so things that need to be frozen, such as you know nineteen uh, vaccinations. Uh, so the sourcing, the sensors, logs, locations, and time of harvest, uh, and store the information on the blockchain. Uh, when it gets to the dock, logging time, temperature at fish landing site, it gets to the warehouse, store representatives, controls the batch on arrival, customer scan, Q oh, that's the store. Then it goes to the logistics, time and temperature log throughout transport. Then it goes to auditors uh, who manufacture <clears throat> um, and verify that the company comply food safety standards. Then it goes to the manufacturing plant, logging time and temperature at the production site, to the warehouse, and then to the store. So, uh, for example, if you wanted to track your meats or your frozen fish with VeChain Cold Chain, you could scan your QR code and get information about the product throughout its manufacturing life cycle from sourcing all the way to the store. This is extremely important for things like vaccines because... <clears throat> According to here, the main issue that the vaccine, which is based on novel technology that uses synthetic mRNA to activate the immune system against the virus, needs to be kept at minus 70 degrees Celsius, uh, 90 ne negative 94 degrees Fahrenheit for us Americans, or below. <coughs> the cold chain is going to be one of the most challenging aspects of the delivery of this vaccination. Well, not anymore because we do have each chain cold chain here. Literally tracks and traces the product from sourcing to the customer. Um, and if anything, if if you know the the 
the temperature rises to, you know, unsustainable levels, the people will know about it because um, the cold chain will alert the, you know, handlers that, hey, there's something wrong. The temperature is too high. It's not optimal. <clears throat> And this article also says the cold chain is going to be one of the most challenging aspects of the delivery of this vaccination. That's a tremendous logistical issue, not only in the U.S., but also outside the Western world. So, you know, V-Chain has been, you know, in the trenches for the past few months since this 19 stuff has started. <clears throat> They've been on the forefront of providing, uh, providing enterprises with solutions to help mitigate risk. This is just one more solution that they have in their back pocket that they can you know show to governments show to companies show to uh, multinational corporations and maybe just maybe v chain cold chain can hopefully get some of these vaccines and start tracking and tracing some of these vaccines And we have a shout out from a company here, Febushi Capital. Uh, the uh, oh, go ahead and follow Isaac Reich as well. Um, so uh, the vice president Zhu Bijun, the vice president of Febushi Capital, had uh, recently gave a positive affirmation to VJ. Uh, let's take a look. <coughs> In the early years, overseas teams have made more explorations in the implementation path and applicate. Wait, so let's take a look here at what the question was. What can Chinese companies learn from foreign blockchain companies? Uh, in the early years, overseas teams have made more explorations in the implementation path and application direction of blockchain technology, accumulated and accumulated, and have more technical engineering resources. But the Chinese team has also performed very well in recent years. The Chinese team has inherited the fine genes of traditional Chinese Confucianism, Buddhism, and Taoist culture, opposed the spirit of persever perseverance and courage, and has a global vision and structure. It has been widely recognized internally, internationally. For example, the Chinese team V-Chain, it's a classic. We believe that the industry is still in its early stages. And the blockchain world is borderless and it is a human historical mission that requires global efforts and i would 100 percent agree with this man okay we're still in our early stages but blockchain technology will 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 take over our future whether you like it or not so go ahead and sell your v chain i will buy it off you <clears throat> and finally, guys, we have a short blurb here from the developers. We always, always want to feature development updates here because without the developers, there would be no product. Thank you to all the developers who do that boring code. I mean, I, you know, I'm going to try to learn a little bit of Marlowe and try to learn a little bit about smart contracts. But every time I see like coding, I literally fall asleep and my brain shuts off. So thank you to the people who could actually stomach this stuff <laughs> and make products that we actually love. Shout out to the VChain devs. VChain Thor uh, version 1.3.7 released with the major bug improvements, new features and bug fixes. Let's take a quick look at this. This is more for, you know, developers and, you know, enterprises, but that's okay. Just drop my mouse. <clears throat> Uh, so the latest development uh, shared with the community via, via the official handle of the VChain dev. Bah! Um, according to the report, the new version comes with an improvement to JS Tracer in the addition of create to support and number of bug fixes. Uh, so the bug fixes are JS Tracer and add create to support. Improve rescheduled condition of packing processes, cover all branches of VM tracer, periodically ping WebSocket client to prevent connection drops. Description module, I don't know what any of that means, but it sounds important. And then finally we have 
Picasso library and it has been upgraded to the latest version. Upgrade was made public last week. Uh, Picasso library is described as a general purpose deterministic library, um, SVG format, especially for our VeChain Thor addresses. The new version is now available for users to download on GitHub. So, any devs interested in developing on VeChain Thor blockchain, uh, I'm sure they'll be happy with this update. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. I know it's a short one here. Not too much news going on today, but that's okay. We're just showing up with our lunch pails every single day and doing this work, putting this work in and getting this grind going. Up on the screen, we have our wonderful Patreon subscribers, AJ, Brett, Garlic House, Mac Harris, Sergio, Lassie Nielsen, American Home Remedies.com, The Fern Line, Jeffrey, Ethan, Maryland Crypto, Boost Wayne, and Brady Adams. It's because of you I am one step closer to escaping wage slavery. Thank you. And lastly, here we have 1,275 days to the next Bitcoin block halving. And like I had mentioned earlier, nothing too much going on in the markets here. Bitcoin is up slightly at about 2.2%. Hopefully, we can start seeing that bleed into altcoins a little bit more. And you can tell that we are currently in a bull run because we have coins going up 100%, like Civic. Aave is going up 20% <coughs> Golem, Yearn. And VeChain is down here at 10%. So hopefully we keep these movies going. Um, let's take a look at any dumps. Yeah, nothing too much dumping here. Nothing that we care about anyway. So, all right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoy your wonderful day, a wonderful Tuesday. Go out, get some sun, hang out with friends, enjoy life. Crypto is just one part of our lives, guys. I love you. Don't let your memes be dreams, and I will talk to you tomorrow.